Uh, let's go to our first presentation, a man that many of you will know well, that's former Armagh Gaelic footballer Jermot Marsden, who of course is representing Ulster GA today with an overview of community development within the association. Jermot, it's over to you. Hey, thanks, Thomas. Um, just getting the, the screen shared here, okay. I hope everyone's doing well. Um, thankfully, there's no snow where I am, but um, there may be a bit where, where we are, so uh, maybe we're better being in the comfort of our own rooms at the moment. Um, so hopefully you'll all be able to see the, the screen okay. Um, so Community Development Department, that's um, that's the department I look after. There's some on the call may never have heard of, of the Community Development Department of Ulster GA. Some may have, and hopefully some will have used uh, the staff and the resources that we have to, to help your club and your counties over the, the last number of years. And hopefully today we'll put you a, a, a better picture of where we are with that department and what services we, we offer to, to clubs right across Ulster and beyond. Um, I, I suppose was leading out on the delivery of this conference, so you're not here again from me today. So I want to pass my thanks to those in the background to make this is today possible? Um, I'm not going to go through everyone because no doubt I'd miss someone, but uh, needless to say, there's been a lot of work put into it. Uh, it is a challenge, this, this online technology, but hopefully we get through it. And uh, you know, hopefully the learnings that you get from a club perspective will, will benefit you and your clubs going forward. And that's what today is all about. So who is the, the Community Development Department and what do we do? Um, I suppose our, our remit is very, very broad. Um, as you can see in the, the infographic there, uh, club development is a big part of that. Um, Fintan O'Dowd is our club development officer. And um, we'll go through each of these sections in, in detail over the next 10 months. Uh, volunteer development, we're all volunteers. We're all here on behalf of our clubs. So how can we help you uh, to become uh, better volunteers through training? And how can we help your club recruit and retain those volunteers? Irish language and culture. Uh, it's, it's getting bigger and bigger within our association uh, and we have an Irish language officer and the staff and Tricia Nicara and we'll hear a wee bit more from Tricia later on this morning as well. Health and wellbeing uh, is so so important uh, and that the GA that's what we're about we look after our membership we look after our communities um, and the health and wellbeing of those members is vitally important whether you're young or old or middle-aged like myself um, you know it's so important that we we look after the health and wellbeing physically and mentally of our members. Community outreach is a is an area over the last 10 years which, which also has made great strides in uh, how, we, how we reach out to others that are not traditionally associated with our association. So you know there's been an awful lot of work that has been into this over the last number of years um, and so we'll, we'll touch on that briefly as we go through it. I've mentioned other um, I suppose others that you know we, we could be called into various aspects. We could be well, public relations or dealing with charities or external agencies or statutory bodies. Our department links into that as well. And uh, you know, it, it's an area of work that, that we are happily to take on uh, if it's for the betterment of the GA and for society in general. Flagging up some uh, the government departments and uh, statutory bodies, sports organizations that we, we partner with. Um, you know, I, th I think it's, it's a good visual to say that you know we are linked at that highest level of government. We draw down funding from from various government departments um, that can fund staff, fund programs, um, and and also the sports organisations. I'll touch on those in our community outreach. But we have a strong multi-sport partnership with the Irish FA, Ulster Rugby, and more recently Belfast Giants, among other sports. Um, and we're involved in other end sports for as well. So we have representation across the board. We're involved in public health agency and the health service executive down south, linked with the Garda Chicana and PSNI. Uh, you know, we, we deal with a range of, of, of as I said, government departments, uh, statutory bodies, uh, again, to help society, but also to, to bring that back into our association and help our clubs. At club, can we reach out? Can we get involved with, with local authorities? I think we must. I think we have to. Um, so certainly have only the, the nine counties of Ulster flagged up here. But wherever your club is situated, make those links with your, your local council, your local authority. Um, there can be benefits there for your club. Are you aware of the, the local community plan that your, your local council will have? Is there opportunities for localised funding? Um, 
health, outreach, sporting facilities, all those things. Is there a pitch strategy going on within your local authority that your club can can inform and get involved in? And um, so there's there's lots of ways we can do that. And I suppose it's important to at least join the sports part in the local authority, but to also link in uh, in other ways that can benefit your club at local level uh, and drive our association once again forward. Community outreach. Um, I wanted to flag this up. This is our flagship cross community program, the Cullen Initiative. Um, bringing young people together through Gaelic games from all different backgrounds. Um, that's over 13, 14 years now we've been doing this programme uh, away at the start. Um, I think some of the, the schools involved were, were very fortunate with their trips to the USA, to the Continental Youth Games, coming together as, as a cross community team. But over the, the last uh, 14 years, you know, there's maybe more than I think we're approaching 70 schools at this stage that have been involved in this post primary uh, initiative, uh, 20 different areas across Ulster, and our, our ladies have been introduced into the programme over the last number of years as well. So essentially we bring young uh, people together from different schools to represent their town or their area, and that has proven very, very successful over the last number of years. So they come together, learn Gaelic games, have an opportunity to play at hurling and football, uh, and then play together as a cross community team. And in, in recent years, over the last seven or eight years, we have been able, not to bring the, the teams to the USA, but we were fortunate through executive office funding to, to take some of our teams to to London to play in the All-British Championships. And that has been fantastic. You know, well received by the young people, the schools, the parents, uh, and hopefully those young people will, will have forged friendships and bonds um, for life. And they will no longer just see the uniform, they see beyond the school uniform, and they realise that you know, they're, everybody's the same and, and everybody just enjoys sport and enjoys being together and socialising and doing things that make us happy. So that's just a wee overview of some of the areas within that. Our Peace 4 programme uh, is led by our community sports development officers um, who we link in with the other sports to deliver a range of, of outreach opportunities to our sports clubs and schools and community groups. Um, so this has been funded for the last four years and um, we're now in a position that we want to, to look forward to Peace Plus funding um, to, to, to deliver this excellent work. I'm sure some of the clubs on the call today have availed of, of many of the programmes involved in our Peace 4 programme uh, as it's funded through the Special EU programmes body and we have a good enough relationship with, it, with them to hopefully submit a further application as I said for Peace Plus. Uh, just some of the, the Opportunities that have been delivered are the project deliverables. Um, and as you can see in the, at the bottom of the table, there's over 19,000 participants have actually been involved in the four years of the project, coming together, sharing ideas, breaking down community barriers, um, and using sport as that, that, that hook to, to drive this forward. So it has been very, very successful. The project has been, has been held up as a, as a model of best practice by SDPB, uh, and it's an area of work that we are proud of and, and want to continue to do as, as best as we can and involve as many clubs as possible. These are some of the images at some of our club sport for peace days and again it's those localised levels where we want you as a club to reach out to your local it's rugby club, hockey club, athletics club, uh, community groups, um, anything at all, youth groups that, that can can bring the community together and if we can show KSR games, uh, football, hurling, ladies football, camogie, handball, rounders, then, then we can do that and, and certainly for the benefit, not just of ourselves, but for the, the community in general. Irish language and culture. Um, as I mentioned, Trisha Nicara is our Irish, Irish language officer and she will be joining us later on for one of the presentations around her Bolumsa Club, uh, Irish language teaching plan for clubs. Uh, this is an area that's growing and growing and, and, and if anyone's on social media you'll see some of the clubs Irish language courses starting next week. Uh, there just seems to be a, a groundswell of movement in this and something our clubs seem to be really keen and Trisha is, is a great point of contact to, to advise in this regard. SCORE, uh, I'll probably mention my own club over the next couple of slides. Our club hasn't been involved in SCORE since the early 80s and I think we won a couple of all Irons, but, but uh, Clannagill, I'm happy to say, are entering the Scorn and Oak uh, next week or the week after in, in the Armagh Heights. And that has just uh, increased 
activity, participation around the club in the last number of weeks. Some of the boys and girls, of course, play, play football, but they're now involved in other club activities, and that's fantastic. So we're going to see how that progresses over the next couple of weeks. Um, club development, um, a big, big part of our department. Um, is, um, I'm sure a lot of the clubs on the call today have, have, have heard of Club Moy, have heard of Club Plan Initiatives, have heard of how to sort of touch base with, with Fintan without our Club Development Officer to, to ask advice on funding or, or other areas. Um, our Club Moy programme is our club accreditation programme, which basically is a governance check for our clubs uh, that would put your club in a really good position going forward. Um, it's a development tool. Uh, it delivers on best practice. It, it's a quality mark for your club. Um, for the future and basically rubber stamps your club that everything's in place from a governance perspective and again I mentioned the own club we went through this process in the latter part of 2021 and we've now been awarded our bronze award and are keen now to progress and put more things in place for the betterment of our club so that's a program if your club hasn't been involved to really really consider that uh, there's a really good snapshot of where your club is at at the moment and you know how, how you can move forward and put the right things in place uh, to make sure your club is operating with the best uh, guidelines possible. Club planning um, linked very much so to the, the Club My programme. You would expect clubs going through that to at least be starting a club plan or, or looking ahead for the next uh, three years. Uh, we went through this process as well as a club and it really brings everyone together. Uh, it gives you a roadmap for the next three years. Uh, and it, it really it gives a series of actions um, and deliverables that will really improve your club. Kieran talked about you know what's happening off the pitch, and if you get that right, that increases your chances of success on the pitch. And we look at the likes of Steve's time and Kilku, um, more recently, and I know Slough Neil Camogues are are heading towards All Ireland uh, series as well. But you know you can really put your club on the map, off the field, and that can help deliver on the field because some of the work going on in the background in the likes of Seastown, Slough Neil, Kilku has been tremendous over the years and very much supportive of a lot of our initiatives and um, you know, thankfully we're, we're seeing all Ireland titles there uh, on the field of play which is great. Other areas of support for our clubs, I'm not going to go through them in too much detail but funding, you know, we do run advice clinics and workshops um, even through the whole Covid uh, pandemic, we had a bespoke um, part of our website that del uh, delivered on funding at local level for those clubs that, that needed help and advice. Through our official guide, any queries around constitutions, etc., we're here to help uh, in terms of property as well, uh, development of those facilities, insurance, all the things that, that the clubs operate and need to do, we, we can help support that. And we've mentioned community outreach um, in previous slides. Volunteerism then is um, a massive part of our department as well. Not just promoting volunteerism, but you know helping our volunteers, um, providing a pathway of training and development for them, um, and linking in with our, our officer training program, which is uh, uh, twinned with uh, the National Officer Development Program in Croke Park. So over the last uh, number of years, we've delivered this jointly. Um, our, our officer training is the highlight of our, suppose, our volunteer development. Um, and we ran nine online workshops there in January and the tremendous attendance of nearly 500 delegates, you know, all wanted to learn about the various roles within the clubs. And, you know, we have all these ready to, to share as well, but the, the attendance and the engagement there was great. It, it's grand, these online uh, initiatives and engagements, but, you know, I do want us to all to get back to the face-to-face -face events. You know, I love this conference to be face to face in the Armagh City Hotel or in, in Cookstown or somewhere today. And unfortunately, that wasn't possible. But I, I do look forward to that time when we can come together because the engagements and the networking that we can do um, face to face is, is far, far better than, than an online engagement. But the online engagement definitely has had its advantages in terms of the number of people availing of, of the training that's on offer. That's our volunteer development pathway. Um, and I suppose the Club Officer Induction Award is, is the officer um, workshops that I previously mentioned. Uh, the Elevate Award is something we, we look at this year again. It's really for clubs really pushing on for, for high-end 
the delivery of governance and, and all the various areas within club club life. Um, and we, we look at that and, and advertise that as we go through. I would like to introduce another level possibly in this pathway, and that's for our youth volunteering, which comes in sort of alongside at entry level there. And um, because it's something and you'll hear in one of the club presentations later with the importance of youth and how we can involve the youth in our, in our volunteering. And Sharon Hockey Grimley coordinates all that alongside Ashleen Grugan uh, in our office um, and provides that support across the province. Just some of the examples of our awards, how we reward and, and recognise our volunteers. Um, and the COVID programme on the left hand side, Sharon will mention that in one of the presentations coming up shortly. We mentioned youth there and um, we've run a successful young leaders programme um, over the last three or four years and it's been very, very successful um, for young people gaining qualifications, uh, accreditations, uh, experience in a, in a range of areas and um, volunteering being one of the main ones. And more recently, we've linked in with the Joint Award, which is uh, linked in with Gashka, the President of Ireland Award and the Duke of Edinburgh Bonds Award. For young people to gain um, experience, skills, and a, a qualification that they can use going forward in their in their careers, and that has been very very successful over the last year or two. So that's something we we hope to progress as we go through the coming years. A couple more slides, folks, just before I finish off. Um, health and wellbeing uh, was mentioned at the very start, and it's so so important. And you know, we're delighted to have Fiona Teg on the call today. A wealth of experience from the PHA. Maura McManaman is our community and health manager and delivers on all of these areas here listed. I'm not going to go through each of them in, in turn, but I suppose the role from an organisational point of view is signposting and, and, and providing that advice to, to our clubs um, so, our, so we can deliver for our membership um, all the best areas of health and wellbeing that we can do. And that's physically, it's mentally, it's, it's promoting the Tech 5 campaign. So all those things are so, so important. Okay, just to finish off then, I've mentioned a lot of names and now I'm just going to embarrass everybody by putting um, a picture to the, to the names. So that's me um, during the first lockdown, I think. <laughs> I don't know how many lockdowns have been on now. Uh, Maura Manaman, she loved me for these photographs. And Sharon as well, Sharon Hockey Grimley. Um, Ashley Grugan. So Ashley and Sharon deliver jointly the volunteer development, more of community health and wellbeing. Fintan O'Dowd. Uh, from a club development perspective, um, as I say, you've heard all these names, and Trisha Nicara, who you'll hear from later on today, our three community sports development officers delivering outreach uh, and, and all that important work is Ryan McShane, uh, Princess of Cain, and Pierce Carty. So that's the community development department, who, as I say, you may have never have heard of before today's conference, but we work across the GA and we're there to help. Um, and as I say, please feel free to contact us on any of those areas that uh, has been mentioned there today.